Okay, um, if you saw my previous long EOC practice exam for geometry, um, you'll know that I promised that I was going to start putting out some more regular videos, uh, short form, quick style review type videos in order to prepare for the EOC. So this is one of those, um, and let's just jump right into it in the spirit of having a quick video. So uh, these were not properly numbered, but I've numbered them. So we have one, two, three, uh, and we're also going to do a few more after this as well. So um, question number one is a vocab question. Which of the following is the converse of the following statement? Uh, for this, you just need to know that converse is like I have this situation. I'm saying if P therefore Q, the converse of that is if Q, therefore P. You're basically just, you think of converse, sounds similar to reverse or inverse. Um, that's how I think about it at least. So if we look at our options here, uh, we have, and let's label, we can label if today is Sunday as our P, therefore or then is our arrow, and tomorrow is Monday is our Q. So let's flip that around and we have Tomorrow is Monday, therefore today is Sunday. And we have that option here in option A. Question number two, on a coordinate grid, AB has endpoint B at 2416, and the midpoint of AB is at P4, negative three. And we are to find the Y coordinate of point A. Um, this question gets a lot easier if you realize that the midpoint formula handles the x and the y coordinate independently. Uh, and what that means is, let's actually just write, we're solving for the y coordinate, so we're gonna say uh, y midpoint is equal to the y coordinate of one end, and we have point b, and plus y a, over two, this is the midpoint formula, and we're gonna substitute in for point uh, B, which we're given as 16, so we have X, Y, I have 16 plus, and I'm solving for the Y coordinate of point A, oops, I cross it out, I solve for the Y coordinate of point A, I'm just gonna say Y A, all over two, and we know the Y midpoint is right there, negative three. So now we can just do some algebra. We have, if I multiply both sides by two, I should actually write that instead of just saying it out loud. And I have 16 plus the A portion of the Y coordinate. And then I can, one more thing, subtract 16 from both sides. And I get the Y coordinate of part A is negative 22. So that I can write in here and we'll be good. Um, I actually don't know if they want us to write that on the right or the left. Give me one second. Let me see if I can find the instructions. And looks like generally they will want you to write it on the right. So let's move this to here. At least on this exam, um, I'm guessing that on your online exam it probably won't matter. But the the important part is you actually come up with negative twenty two. So, all right, question number three: uh, Which of the following statements about this figure must be true if those two lines there and there are parallel? And we have some options. Let's work through them. So DAB that angle there plus ABC that angle there uh, is equal to 180 degrees. Um, we do not have enough information because we do not know what the angle offset between line DA and CB are. Um, if we were given some more information about that, we might be able to prove supplementary angles there, but for this one, uh, we, we know about AB and CD, but we don't inherently know anything about 
uh, BC and AD, those two lines. And as a result, we can't infer any information about those two angles. Let's go on to the next one. Measure of DAB, that's this angle here, plus CDA, that's this angle here, are supplementary. Uh, now we actually have something to work with because um, what we can do that we couldn't do pre previously is extend ooh, extend these lines. I'm going to try to draw a straight line the best I can here and here. And if I continue using my notation of double line angle and single line angle, that guy is equal to that guy there. These two are equal because of interior adjacency and the same process allows us to make BAD and AB whatever you want to call it X those two are also interior adjacent so now by extension I now can say definitively that B AD which is that angle and C, D, A, which is that angle and also that angle, do indeed add up to 180 degrees because this line here, any flat line is 180 degrees and I have a comprehensive set of angles here and then here, which again equals that. Those two angles do indeed add up to 180 degrees. So I can say B is true. We can take a quick look at the other ones as well. Let's take a quick peek just to make sure we understand why they're not true. Um, BAD is congruent to ADC. Um, that, just in general, you can kind of tell doesn't look true, but the specific reason actually plays off of what we just discussed, which is um, if we were to extend these guys, and if I stopped drawing straight lines, like curvy lines, this angle and this angle are equal, and that angle and that angle are equal. And this could, in theory, be true. The situation that would lead this to be true is we determined earlier that these are supplementary. Uh, if one of these angles was 90 degrees, then option C would indeed be true because then we would have a situation where we have 90 plus 90 equals 180. We proved supplementary in the last part B, and then the only way to have these two guys be the same, which is what C is saying, is if they were both 90. Um, however, we can tell by inspection that if we look here, pretty obvious to me at least that uh, this is not quite 90. That would be 90 and that would be 90-ish and we've got a pretty big discrepancy. So I'm going to go ahead and say C is not true. I removed my answer. And then ADC, that angle there, is congruent to ABC. Again, this is a similar issue to why we couldn't prove A. Um, as being the correct answer, which is we have information about those two lines. However, these two guys, we cannot prove any, um, there's no relationship that we can easily show between those two lines. Uh, so we can't say anything about uh, the angles here and here that are across each other on the shape. So. All that being said, we did show a supplementary for DAB and CDA, so the answer for number three is B. All right, question number four. So Claire is drawing a regular polygon. She has drawn two of the sides and created a 140 degree angle as that interior angle measure right here. And the question is asking when Claire completes this regular polygon, what will the sum of the interior angles be? And luckily we have a sum of interior angles for a regular polygon equation, which is very convenient. 
However, you may notice that we are missing some information. Um, let me call this the sum for now. Um, this n is the number of sides of the regular polygon. Uh, and you may notice in the problem statement we are not given this information. However, we can solve for it. Um, there is another convenient equation, which is the exterior angle is equal to 360 over that n, or the number of sides. So you can get the exterior angle by looking at one of the sides extended off, and then you take the supplementary angle to that interior angle. Um, and I am going to show that exterior angle as 180 degrees minus 140. Um, should be obvious if I call this exterior angle X that I have for supplementary. The definition of supplementary is A plus B, or in this case X plus 140 equals 180. And then I'm just subtracting 140. And I get 180 minus 140. And if I wanted to get real precise, I could just say x equals 40. So uh, I'm just going to finish writing this, and then I'll do that substitution. So I have 40 equals 360 over n. And now I can multiply both sides by n. Ooh. 40n equals 360, and one last step, and we get n equals 9. So this is a 9-sided shape, uh, and this n we can directly plug into our number of sides on the left-hand side. So we can come back to the left and say, instead of n minus 2, we now know 9 minus 2 for this particular regular polygon. Multiply it by 180, and we get the sum of interior angles that we are being asked in this question. So what is 7 times 180? Uh, that's a great question. Give me one second, I will tell you. We have 1260. And that can be written in the boxes. And we've solved number 4. All right, final question for the day. Uh, I erased all of our previous work, and we're going to take a look at question number five. So we have the owners of a water park are going to build a scaled-down version of a popular water slide, and we have the side view of both the larger water slide here and the smaller water slide here. And we are told to find uh, a new point C prime on this coordinate system that makes a prime c prime a prime b prime c prime which is the smaller slide similar to the larger slide a b c this similar notation here means that we are going to have a scale factor that relates these two slides or triangles um, so if we look to see if there is a side length on both of these triangles that we can use to determine this scale factor and there is there is this 20 and there is the 60 uh, which are both the height or the a b distance a b or a b prime depending on which triangle you're looking at and um, we are looking for the scale factor going from big to small because we have this distance which we are then going to multiply by the scale factor and that will give me this smaller distance here. And that will allow me to find the total, the point, wherever it ends up living somewhere over here for the smaller side, so, or the smaller slide. So uh, what number, what, the, what does this look like algebraically? So I'm going to take the 60 height. I'm going to multiply it by some scale factor x, and that will give me the 20 height on the smaller triangle. And this is a simple division problem, so I'm going to divide by 60, 
and I get a scale factor of 1 over 3. So that means that any dimension on the larger slide that I can then multiply by 1 over 3 gives me a dimension on the smaller slide. So let's find the distance from A to C. That is, again, this distance here. And we can multiply that by 1 third, and we'll almost be done. So what is that distance? We can do a distance formula. We have, I'm going to label this as x1, and this is x2. You'll notice that y is not changing. So that means that when we get to the y portion of the distance formula, it's actually going to become 0, and you'll see that in a second. So uh, I'm not going to write the distance formula. I'm just going to do it. x2 minus x1, that's 150 minus 10 squared. And here's what I mentioned earlier. I have 60 plus, oops, I forgot the plus, plus 60 minus 60 squared. And this whole thing here, 60 minus 60 is 0, 0 squared is 0, and then I'm adding 0 to whatever I got on the left-hand side here, and that is not going to change it. So let's write square root of 150 minus 10 is 140. And now I can just cancel the squared and the square root because that y portion of the distance formula canceled out. And I am left with a distance from A to C is 140. We have units of feet. Um, so this is 140 feet. So uh, let's find A prime to C prime. So if we multiply this 140, times my scale factor, 1 over 3 we decided earlier. That gives me the distance from A prime to C prime. And that is 46.6. I'm going to round it to 47. OK, we have everything we need now. So um, we have an initial point of A prime. And again, here we have no contribution on the y. What that means is that um, when we come to the small triangle here, this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to simply have a slope of 0 here. We're going to have a flat line. Uh, and that allows us to, whatever the point is going to be, it's going to have a y of 20. And you can see that all the answers have the same thing. So that doesn't help us. But it's cool. what it does allow us to do is simply say, OK, my initial x position is 30, and I know I have a total length of 47. And 30 plus 47 is 77. And my y coordinates say the same at 20, and this should be the final answer. I'm going to rewrite that guy. So 77, comma 20. And that corresponds to option B. And that's number 5. So I hope you found this shorter form video useful. Um, there's going to be a lot more of these coming out over the next few weeks leading up to the EOC exam. Uh, so please subscribe, like this video, and stay tuned for future EOC review content. Uh, there's going to be a lot more coming out, like I said, over the next few weeks. So um, keep on coming back, and um, hopefully we can cover as much material as possible so when you get into that EOC you'll see um, some stuff from these videos that you will be familiar with. So uh, have a good rest of your day and like I said earlier, good luck on your exam.